Michael, probably the most fun part about this is that these two players know each other extremely well. I think I asked Josh, how familiar are you with going up against Jack? He said, I have not played more games against any single person in my entire flesh and blood history than Jack. These guys have like 30 official games uh, head to head. It, and that is huge, given that, you know, Josh is known as the warrior player. There's a lot of psychology that goes into this. And considering the amount of experience that Jack and Josh have had, you know, playing against each other, that kind of like mental like depth and mind games that can happen between the two of them is just going to be crazy. Like, I think we're in for a real treat, especially since this is the set determiner uh, as, you know, blue pitch coming back from a, a 2-0, bringing it back up to 2-2. This is going to be for all the marbles now to see who advances into the semifinals. And these two randomly got paired into each other, right? They both choose the slot, I think, uh, that they sort of appear at and they laughed. They they knew the other would choose uh, sort of slot four, I think it was, and they'd end up going head-to-head. -head. Now, this this game, we actually saw this to bookend the, the Dynasty show match between these two decks. Now, something I want to point out, big difference between then and now is that Ryan has got a lot of support uh, in Dynasty. Sorry, it was the Uprising show match. So this deck looking... Quite different in many ways, whereas Dorinthia has got a couple of things, the Iron Song Pride, the Puncture, so a couple of extra uh, of these sort of effects that can definitely help her. But this is an incredible matchup. Uh, Josh dubs it Classic Battles for obvious reasons, not only because the hero is going head-to-head. -head. But let's bring up uh, let's bring up their match card, if we, if we can, Michael, yeah. and talk about these guys' accolades, because uh, Josh, obviously, he's the Flesh and Blood Team League Season 1 MVP, top 32 worlds this year. Uh, I think between sort of Bolt and, and, and Dorinthia uh, had uh, like a 7-2 and two record, I want to say. Uh, he's the first player in Hong Kong to get 1,000 XP. Uh, he has a cat uh, that we, you know, we're contractually obliged to, to point that out. Jack has two cats, though. Oh, well, uh, wait, but again, one up him. Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of a one up there. Josh might have to, you know, head down to the shelter, fix that up. But obviously a finalist at uh, the Battle Heart in Hong Kong and in Hong Kong Nationals 2021. Uh, so again, you're looking at two players that actually have to play differently because of how well they know each other. Uh, Jack, I mean, Josh is saying, like, Jack knows all my lines <laughs> a lot of the time. I need to really try and um, sort of throw a wrench in the works here to, to sort of overcome him. And last time these two played, it went all the way down to the wire. Um, you often see Reiner, um, I guess, Michael, opt for a bit more of a value-oriented strategy, play at mid-range, block heavily, make use of the the, the break point on the romping club, uh, obviously threaten uh, the defense reactions, of course, um, sort of reckless swing when that life total gets low. So I think everyone should set themselves in. It could be a long one, but it's there's a lot of intricacy here, and I only hope that we can start to scratch the surface on that for all of you at home. Yeah, for sure. Well, it looks like the players are actually ready to go here. Um, actually, wait, no, Josh does not have his equipment out. It looks like he's still in the sideboarding process. But like as you said, this is going to be a classic battle. It's going to be Dory versus yeah. good old Reinar. Uh, this is this is uh, a, a real test of of knowledge both ways. Um, just being able to either maximize your your hand and also just like slowly wrestle control into your favor uh, so that you can pin your opponent uh, where they basically have no way out. Yeah, I think, you know, cards like Savage Beatdown uh, appear in this set, obviously at Majestic. That's the kind of card that can allow you to come in for 12 off that that sort of one card. Skull Crack is the kind of card that when discarded gives you that, that resource, which is really nice. Berserk, I think, is one of the scariest cards that Brood have available to them. So when they discard a card with, you know, six or more power, they actually banish it. And instead, they can just draw a card if it's six or more power. So very much in that same vein. But Berserk is giving you extra cards while you're getting, uh, you know, in, intimidate triggers and all that kind of stuff. It really allows you to have this really potential blowout turn. I think a lot of Dorinthia players really respect going up against Reiner. It can be really tough for them. Sometimes Reiner, if he gets tempo, we can really blow them out here. Uh, and again, like a lot of these Reiner decks, like you expect to see Jack play with some of these um, zero for four defense reactions and make it very hard for Josh to get value from reprise effects uh, and the like. For sure. Okay, we got the uh, signal from the players in the in the lobby that they are good to go. So let's go ahead and jump on over there and let them begin. All right, here we go. Oh, something oh I have a color now. Reset. Yeah, let me just change color. Here we go. Now I can move around a little bit. Yeah, so I, yeah, we we, we, <laughs> we wound back a little bit there. Look, I expect the the, the Orinthia equipment to be uh, Braveforge braces, um, 
in a matchup like this one, you take courage. You really want to put the pressure on. If you're playing, um, you know, spring tunic, you're playing heavily around your shunts, which can have some can have some value here uh, at times. But you definitely want to be the aggressor uh, as during theory in a matchup against Reinar because again, when they get that tempo back, it's very very hard to wrestle it. Uh, Crown of Providence is the standard. I think that something like Arcanite Skullcap's great for Blitz, but Dory really you know appreciates being able to. Um, Shut down the first CNC, the, the pummeled CNC um, with Crown of Providence, or even just if there's a CNC coming in, you can you know pick up a card or have to deal with that. Um, so this is a pretty standard setup here for the Durinthia player. Your opponent is blocking, um, uh, and the Rhino is definitely going to be blocking a lot. So Dory has to think a little bit more about like what cards are great for her. Like things like Glistening Steel Blade, not so strong, but obviously Warriors Valor going to be really good here. This is Claws for Rhino, which is, so I'm very fascinated to see this because. Straight away, Michael just tells me it might be an aggressive game plan here for Jack. Yeah, for sure. A much more aggressive game plan. Uh, Claws definitely gets to maximize off the Blood Rush Bellow. Um, and yeah, you're, you're just going for a, a much more aggressive stance because the only way these things get go again is you, if you discard a six on your turn. Um, I, think, hmm, I think this might favor Dory. It really is going to depend on, um, on the flow of tempo here. Now... Uh, this is just a Dawn Blade for three on, on the first turn. This is definitely Josh testing Jack here. Um, he's going to get two cards here. Now, normally, I think blocking nine is the safest, but you don't always want to lose access to those three. So, block six still respects uh, Iron Song response and things like out for blood. Um, but if there's two defense reactions, if Josh really wants to lay it on thick, and I mean, God, if, God forbid he has something like a singing here. So, um, reasonable block from Jack, but not max respect. Yeah, I think I think blocking six here is the right right call. If if Josh really wants to go over by you know by one with the singing, um, it's 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 a, well, okay. Well, I just go it. for it. Okay, <laughs> this is this is asserting dominance. This is the same as picking your deck up in TTS and shaking it back and forth instead of just hitting the R key to shuffle it. The so singing here straight away tells us we want to pick up like a th uh, you know zero for three. Yep. Oh, I'm right. It's oh, power. oh, yep. Oh, so this is more than just three. Singing pulling out overpower here. This goes up by seven in total, uh, which means that, yeah, we're coming for a whopping 10 to the six block. And there's the reckless swings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, listen, you play a dangerous game like Josh is, uh, you risk running into the defense reaction here. So uh, you're taking two damage and uh, that's getting covered up. Reckless swing is the biggest no you card in this game. It's like, hey, you're going to take four. It's like, no, you, you take two and then pass it back. So it's always good to look for opportunities to get like value out of a card like Overpower, something that you don't always have access to. If you're on like a three card hand, like forget about using Overpower. It's like an idealized situation, or maybe you're able to win in the end the game off like a single swing with Dawnblade and then just Overpower out of nowhere. This is just uh this is just a six here from uh, from Jack here. So throwing out the skull crack and we are pitching out muscle and alpha rampage here. So just a just a two for six. Now uh, we've we've all watched Josh's games many times. He's a very patient and a very patient warrior. Um, if he doesn't have a good hand, he's he's just like he'll throw some cards, block, and move on. Uh, so, considering that he's giving this some thought, he's thinking through a lot of lines right now. Yeah, I mean, look, a, a lot depends on the fact that your opponent is actually playing this manable clause here. So, you know, you're asking yourself, okay, so how defensively slanted are they? Um, can I just if I have like a, a you know, a, a Warriors Valor plus a pump, can I just go to town here? Is it worth taking six four? Um, you know, the question is always like, how much tempo can I can I rest back? Because look, one card for six. This is not it's not commanding turn, right? It's not Reinar taking tempo. It's none of that. Josh definitely, by being lower on life, you know, has that here. Whether or not he blocks uh, will indicate to us whether he thinks he can really start to to take an up a notch here. Going to 32 seems pretty wild, especially with how effective Dorinthia is at playing off of, you know, two cards in an arsenal up against an opponent that may not have, like, a high density of defense reactions. Well, opting to block uh, with the twinning and out yep. blood. Two very good Twinning cards. less exciting in this matchup, right? Because your opponent doesn't look like they're going to block that much, necessarily. Um, they are more aggressive. So twinning, like, the idea of going around, like, a 9 or 12 block may not be realistic and... You have two more of those in your deck, so all well worth blocking here. And but did Josh pass back? Uh, he just played E pot and passed back. Oh, jeez. Okay. Ah, oh, well, 
Now, uh, that, that idea of you lose obviously tempo playing an e pot here, but Josh is playing for a longer game, so expect him to batten down the hatches here as Blood Rush comes in. Intimidate trigger here. And again, remember this with the claws, disgusting synergy. All your brute attacks get plus two this turn. This is why uh, Reinar is to be feared when he when he is able to get tempo. Yep. Uh, and again, you know, we got Blood Rush had go again. So yeah, with the, with the card six or more power discarded, we get the intimidate trigger plus the claws coming in for ten, and then we can bookend them with uh, with something else. And considering that just epot pass, I mean, it allows Reinhardt to just have full agency over, you know, having that five card hand off of a blood rush. That that is as good as it gets right now. Um, so yeah, as you said, yeah, coming across for ten easily, followed up with one big attack at the end. Okay. Just trying to block, considering that I mean, this is the only way you're going to get value out of some of these cards. Oh nope, it's not going to be an intimidate. Ah, huh, that's interesting. I yeah, I don't think that. I mean, you're, you're counting the amount of resources that your Reiner opponent has here, but um, you, you may be expecting like a second mandible to come out. Uh, instead, the, we see a swing big instead four. So uh, this is for 10, obviously, with the pump from Blood Rush Bellow, and there's no way Josh is getting a quicken token off of this one. So he is taking uh, a large amount of damage, and as you can see, he's lost much of his hand to this. Remember, he's got one card in Banish from Intimidate, so if he opts not to block here, it's just an obscene amount of damage to be taking. I would not be surprised to see some armor involved, but we'll probably we'll see that a little bit later in the game. One card hand, one in arsenal, and uh, it's about trying to set up and trying to uh, try not to get blown out, I guess, on, on these big turns. Route pitch, Dawnblade for three. Now, in some situations, this might be frightening for your opponent seeing a naked dawn blade but you have no cards in hand um you're not letting them turn on reprise <laughs> you're just never you'll, blocking this yep, so you'll just take that poke yep. and move on oh jeez oh, back, <laughs> back blood rush <laughs> bellows <laughs> jack you monster this is bad okay and again jack sculpted his hand such that these guaranteed to be sixes and uh wreck a romp yeah going away so blood rush is turned on Again, Josh is on the hook for at least 10 damage. Uh, there's two floating here, so um, there's a good chance there's there's more where that came from. Now, this is where the Courage of Blayhold, no defense reaction list for Dory can can suffer a little bit. Um, obviously, red shunts don't give you a lot of value, but you, know, you would get some value blocking these big claws, and there's maybe a case to be made. Oh, no. You got a blue shunt here, so go. that's good. It's five, essentially five value, right, off the, off the one card if you count the damage, so... Um, it's reasonable enough for Josh here, and uh, he probably only has one or two blue steel blades in, in his deck right now. I think now. they may have forgotten to do the uh, Intimidate trigger off the Blood Rush Bellow, but... Yes. <laughs> Wait. Four cards, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Josh down to 28 now. Tunic counter. Say that another swing big. Okay, pack call here. Just, uh, again, three for eight. Doesn't suck. Uh, I think this is what this is in the classic battles deck, right? It's interesting, it like a card that obviously has an effect on defending, which is nice to sort of make sure you got a six on top. Yeah, it's definitely one of those like nice uh, includes, considering that's a yellow block three swing for six. I mean, that's what a lot of brutes are asking for. Yeah, yeah, it's it's right up there out of yellow sixes. Um, definitely make them feel good. Uh, again, if you look, the warrior play in this situation. You're not thinking about trying to regain tempo. You have some elements of your setup in play. Um, we saw Josh do this uh, against Andrew Rudin last week. Really let the Olden smack him about a bunch. He had some slow turns, just developed some epots, and then he never lost the tempo after that point. So Dorinthia knows that she can give a little bit of ground here, but Josh is blocking liberally and has taken 17 damage already. This is... Not necessarily what where you want to be. It's going to be very hard to make Rhino respect uh, your damage at this point. We are two Blood Rush Bellows deep, though, so the question of whether Rhino can land on this thick or not will <laughs> depend on the Scab Skin Scaler's role here. Live by the Scabbies, die by the Scabbies, I say. No. Oh, jeez, oh. he put the card forward before he even knew what was going on. Oh. And this is a, this is a lesson in patience now, Michael. I mean, the, the Renathia player has to block as much as she can. Yep. You got to keep waiting for that break in the storm. 
Um, and this is when your equipment might need to be called in. Uh, you might uh, you might make like a, a bolters and and and. I mean, yeah, you, you need you obviously need to block with non-equipment cards. Excuse me to stop this damage from being bad. So yeah, two cards to block the mandible claw is. Ugh. I wonder if I'm missing something on my end, but they, they're not doing the uh, intimidate triggers. Uh, yeah, there should be a the intimidate trigger off barraging here. Uh, yeah, I can't really can't really intervene here, but yeah, there should, yeah. <laughs> should be a okay. intimidate well, trigger. <laughs> Dory getting the quicken token here, um, fully blocking the uh, the swing big. Love that. Again, all part of the setup. Now, Josh just needs to uh, make sure he doesn't pop this on uh, a Dawnblade for three, and he's going to be golden. And no risk of that, considering he's got no cards in his hand. Yeah, a little interesting. Uh, can't really. I'm not going to say anything. This is my first rodeo, so <laughs> I'm going to leave <laughs> we'll, we'll, it to we'll, 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 we'll point out. But yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, I guess the one good thing about the Quicken Token, uh, it doesn't go away if you can't use it. So uh, <laughs> it's going to stick around yeah, it, until there's some break in the storm. Well, it's not insignificant as well. Um, it's obviously go again is often something you spend an entire card to do. The only situation which that is not the case is where it's like glint where you are also drawing a card off, off getting that go again or... Uh, you know, like, for example, it's it's like a blue hit and run, right? It's fantastic. Having non-conditional go again also unlocks your attack actions that follow up the Dawnblade. So you, you you put a non-threatening Dawnblade in front of your opponent, they block it out, whatever, follow it with the command and conquer. Uh, and having having a quicken token on board here, meaning you don't need to spend a card, actually means that, like, Pummel CNC is, can happen. Dorinthia, some lists, maybe Josh's list, maybe not, uh, run, like, that singular blue Pummel here to really ruin your day if it lines up well. I play a similar list. It's worked for me like once in 200 games, but when it does, it's 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 disgusting. So Scab's okay. here, two action points for the Reinar, and he is far from done applying this pressure. Reinar just laying it on thick here. Continuing the onslaught with that red pulping. Yeah. And again, getting dominate here is obviously pretty big. Um, Josh is not incentivized to, to block it with equipment in that case because... The action points already there for the Reinar. So, uh, Sand Sketch plan is going to be discarded. So, fortunately for, for Josh here, no dominate on this pulping. But again, still an action point remaining after this comes in. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, blocking spoils and glistening, both those cards fill similar roles. They're turn starters, they have non conditional goal again. But having two of them in your hand means you're likely pitching the glistening uh, a lot of the time. So, Josh is definitely not. Feeling ready, I think, to, to to actually make his play here. We've got a uh, C and C following up the pulping here, which is scary because you have to wonder what Josh is protecting in Arsenal. Yeah, that's the only thing that he has really going for him is trying to continue to build up and accumulate some resources. Got that E-pot down, got that Quicken token, get something in Arsenal. Just waiting for that break before he can try to burst out and say, hey, Reinar, it's my turn to play. Uh, yeah. Because right now it seems very one-sided. It's just like seeing the bully on the... Uh, on the playground, just like wailing onto the kid. Um, but hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be able to see some sort of turnaround here and it won't be incredibly <clears> one-sided. <throat> uh, there we go with the full block, maintaining his arsenal and probably more importantly at this time, his life total. Yeah, frustrating for Josh because I think there is maybe, I don't know how greedy he is. There's like a world where you only block with one card and then play that CNC off an energy potion, right? To try and limit Reinar's ability to keep you under his thumb because he's <laughs> scabs rolling again. I mean, why not here? This just costs cost Jack nothing to do. I mean, it costs an action point, but I mean, he's getting that back more times uh, than not. <laughs> okay, two AP. Uh, it, it's it's going down each time. Six five four. So yeah, definitely. Like game is far from over, but our the Dorinthia player here has spent much of her deck blocking. So there's 37 cards left in in Josh's deck here. Eventually, you know Josh needs to find a way to gain tempo and then be able to manifest a significant advantage as a result of that. He will need cards to do so. So constantly having to block like this uh, is definitely going to be quite challenging. Is a claw. Claw for three. Josh might consider taking this. Because his opponent isn't opening up with like a pulping or like an attack that sort of has go again. So he knows that like, all right, there's probably a six following this up. 
can I do something with two cards in an arsenal? Enough that means that Ryan on air has to play off three cards or even two cards. Uh, any of those incremental advantages as Joss tries to rest tempo back is, is crucial. So when you're looking at a three damage non on hit effect here, you start to think, all right, do I have a life buffer to give up here in order to keep some card density? And he's decided to block. It's really discipline. Yeah. Yep. So same question here. Uh, just just a vanilla six, we'll call it in this case. Um, Josh may have like a plenty of sort of attack reacts in his hand, or you know, again, he looks at his he looks at his equipment. Right, he knows that he can make use of some of this if he if he needs to. Courage of Blade Hold still available. Plus energy pop means he can do a lot. Popping courage with less than a full grip uh, feels pretty bad. Definitely feels like you're limited in your because you need to guarantee that Dawnblade hits the first time to get that extra resource point of value off the courage, right? To be able yeah. to get that second yeah. attack. Well, just Saving a quicken token in play already means that off a four card hand, Josh could have a similar level of impact to a, a five card hand, right? Uh, and that's why maybe some of the armor's coming out here. The Bolter's block, I think, is interesting though. Um, Sometimes we see a bolter's block with because there's like an awkward break point or or something like that. Josh is just like, I want to take as little damage as I can. And well, you've seen Commander Conquer, but have you seen Commander Conquer with Go again? <laughs> that always feels really good. Uh, Commander Conquer yeah. with Go again is just one of the most amazing things in the world. Yeah, pretty handy way as well. Like it means that Josh. Can try and you know cause some problems with a Dawnblade attack to follow this one up here. It's not going to be uh, world breaking, but it is like a you can um, you know you can just go up by three on this Dawnblade attack, right? That's why we're sort of checking our arsenal here. There's none floating, so it's Iron Song responsible bust for Josh. Uh, unless he wants to use Epot, there could be Epot glistening uh, into Blimp into another attack there. So like there there is some shenanigans, but again. That defense reaction shuts that down entirely. So great timing uh, for Jack to find that. Well, that's that's what Josh wanted right now. Uh, bringing the Reinar down to a card and arsenal. I still electing the scab skins here, though. Yeah, it is interesting. It makes you wonder what what the plan is here. If there's like a one cost attack, because. Uh, unless it's double mandible this turn, um, the off the tunic counter in a blue. Yeah, one card for yep. six. I mean, so now Josh is like, okay, I have Epot, I have Courage, I have four cards. Do I just take six damage and go for it? I'd say he's like getting a little low, uh, and there's quite a, a, a life differential here, um, so such that there's no guarantee that he's getting reprise triggers. And that's always the scary part is during theories. Like you have a you have a pop off turn that is centered around getting reprise triggers. Um, if you, you know, because you're not looking at a card like Glistening Steelblade as a Dory player and getting excited about it in this kind of matchup. Um, that's the only real good card for Josh if his opponent doesn't want to block, um, which I imagine Jack will. Especially since he's, yeah, he's just floating comfortably at 36 life. I mean, there's very little incentive to throw cards in front of things, especially when you got your opponent the slow. So you, then, then that begs the question, right? Okay, well, if my opponent wants to, to has happened to block me with two cards, can we just proceed in a mid-range fashion and how long can we do that for because uh both these players are down now they're approaching that second cycle i would i would sort of suggest 34 cards left in josh's deck 40 in jacks this is great though warriors valor Dawnblade, um threatening like a, a a pump of any kind from arsenal to respect this adequately uh you know it it, it needs to be a nine block And that is not a nine block. <laughs> that is most certainly not a nine block. But it's kind of saying, hey, I've already seen two of your Iron Song responses. Uh, so you got to give me that. You, know, yep, you got to yep. give me the E pod if you want to get anything further. And so it's a bit tough, like, as the Dorinthia player, when you obviously, like, your net, your net gain of cards there because you just play the Warriors Valor there to block with two. But you always want your opponent to, to give you give you three for that, but you can't always force them to. And, and when your opponent has such a huge life lead, you just, <laughs> they're not going to give you what you want in that sense. So you have to be patient. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm pretty certain that Josh wouldn't have 
like that that arsenal has to be i wouldn't say it's going to be a reprise dependent uh <laughs> attack reaction it could be because that just it could be singing um singing is a good arsenal target but yeah in this setup it could be like a supremacy, supremacy as well yeah, yeah. Yeah, hard pressed to think why he'd yeah, want to. He probably wouldn't want Arsenal more, you know, expensive defense reaction. One way you can walk the life total back, honestly, in this situation, is swing naked Dawnblade and just just get little pumps off it, right? Like if your opponent just blocks Exaxes or, or or you know, often two cards, you try and get value out of things like route. Like you know, you have in this matchup, you might have two. Uh, you probably have one by standard, one sat in your sideboard. So bringing the second one here makes sense against an opponent who nominally you probably come in expecting your opponent to have a romping club i think yep. um so you bring in all those cards that sort of have reprise effects in the extra route density here but i mean we're not even there yet i mean josh has to decide what he does about the the smash instinct here which is again ryan is still able to off two cards you know present you these six damage attacks so you have to respect this at a lower life total yeah and these kind of cards are really good in terms of a card parity um it's saying give me two cards for my one um yeah. and this yeah this one doesn't require any sort of discard so i mean if this if this kind of cycle continues um the dorinthia deck is going to run out of or run thin on a lot of the key components that are going to be required to be able to deal 36 more damage to close out the game yeah i mean dorinthia can do this with the warriors valor but she only has three of those right now has a lot of uh two and three for sixes you know what i mean he, he does this <laughs> I hear uh, like he can sixes. like he can yeah he can pivot to this um this this really nice like even in a clause build right you can pivot to like a really effective uh value game where like you block with two cards present six or, or more you have such a high life total that when you do want to try and have a blood rush turn or anything that is like predicated by like madcap charger or you know whatever gives you that go again you can hold the extra cards here so um balls really in jack's court and and uh you know josh had the josh cards didn't line up all that well early this also doesn't feel great so this is a uh, this is a crown of providence block in a situation where you're not actually going up cards. So Josh definitely wants to protect his arsenal, uh, as evidenced by how he's dealt with CNC, and he's filtered a card out of his hand there with that block. But he wants to keep four. It might be time. It might be time to go here. Yeah, Dory holding five cards, uh, ready to go here. Um, didn't ha didn't even have to take that much damage from that, honestly. Uh, just four, yeah. bringing it down to seventeen, but. Yeah, this might be the time to try to equalize uh, the game state. If I see a hand filtered like that, like that was not the Arsenal card being sunk, it was a hand card. It makes me think maybe red density might be a little bit higher than Josh would like to guarantee um, the ability to, to go up on these defense reacts. If it's like a, a supremacy in Arsenal and then like four reds or whatever, even with an energy potion, even with courage of blade hold, it's like a little bit scary uh, and no guarantee that you can really execute your game plan. Uh, and not to mention the fact that there's Three sink, three fight, two reckless swing, potentially three uh, in this Rhino list. So, I mean, I guess when the claws build that some of those might come out here, but you have to just uh, bear in mind how many of those defense reactions are lying in wait. And and again, Dorinthia has some ways to get over zero for four now. Um, puncture when there's an armor block is great. Rhino won't do that all that often to you. Um, and then, of course, that Josh plays a little bit with some, you know, interesting defense reactions like Biting Blade which changed the blocker math quite a lot, allow you to go up four with the one card and offer singing, that's a plus five. So there's definitely a few ways you can navigate an expected sort of defense reaction here, but um, more than one is probably asking too much from the Dory player. For sure. And and I'm, I'm sure Josh has also noticed that the Reinhardt has been sitting on that arsenal for quite some time. Um, so he's probably suspecting. This is sussy. Yeah. <laughs> Naked Get yourself off. a life. Uh, and again, so you can say, okay, well, I'm not going to give you a reprise. You need to show me the money. It might mean that Josh has to play Glint into a non-reprise situation. He might have to use his bolters. The, the ideal situation, if there's a run through here, but no, I mean, this is expected. Your the opponent's too healthy to give you a reprise, so bolters has to be popped here. So, uh, Brayforge and another attack, maybe. Josh needs to find a way, a reason uh, to to get value out of his cards in his hand right now. And Josh, earlier in the uh, in the call, he was mentioning how the uh, refraction bolters is a key component, and it really shows, <laughs> you 
you know, <laughs> what kind of warrior you are. And yes, <laughs> yeah. He says he says you can tell if you're a good Dorothea player based on how you use your bolters here. He's definitely forced to use them in a very suboptimal case. Yep. But you can still argue that, like, you know, uh, <laughs> this beats um, wasting half of, a, you know, half of the value of a glint, the Quicksilver. Um, again, I think this list has two, might have a couple run-throughs in there. So if you draw a run-through on a turn like this, it's great. But it's so weird because um, you're against an opponent you expect to block. So maybe your run-throughs come out. Or maybe you just pitch them earlier in the game because you don't expect them to actually be useful for you. Um, but yeah, shout out to Shin Inoue in the chat, another fantastic Dorinthia player. Uh, I think singing in the Arsenal is most likely, and Jack is giving him nothing. We haven't seen the second attack yet, so Josh is Josh has passed. We're past reactions because Bolters actually gets popped after a hit is confirmed. And I guess he's deciding whether or not to Brave Forge or if he's going to play something out from Arsenal. Did he gain the life from uh, Heart of Final? No, he, he didn't gain the life from Heart. <laughs> um, Maybe he's had one too, many, one too many. What is this? Okay, so this indicates to me straight away there's a Twinning Blade involved in this turn potentially. So we have Unconditional Go again. That's the first part of the twinning, the triple hit combo you need. Uh uh, and plus also like the, the the piercing one, which probably won't be relevant here. It's possible that Jack tries to deny reprise by using armor on this block here. This is very strange to see Courage of Blade hold popped after the first attack has happened. Josh is trying to force some action here. Uh, again, it, there's, there's potential for Twitting to go for a third hit and still confirm the value of Courage, but this is extremely unconventional line. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly just kind of flabbergasted by what I'm seeing here. So, I mean, well, she's I, I, freaking I'm, me out. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I've and Dawn Blade for three. <laughs> <laughs> oh my one. god! <laughs> okay, so he has to. Uh, he has to pay for this. So precision is one. Dawn Blade is one. Uh, well, he, still he checks. Should have, should have done floating. He played courage, so he doesn't need to actually. Oh, that's a, it's, a, it's a free hit. You're right. Yeah. I mean, his opponent, though, is just is thoroughly unmoved, Michael, because Josh has presented six damage here, but he's done a lot of... Um, it's like the character from Sailor Moon, uh, the meme where he's like the guy with the mask on, and he's like, my work here is done. And everyone's like, but you didn't do anything. And he just <laughs> <laughs> disappears. So much like, for so little. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a potential for this to be um, nuclear as a turn, mm -hmm. but it requires some keywords to be satisfied. Um, now... If that's a defense reaction in Arsenal, it will be very bad for Josh because there will be no reprise. Something like Puncture can still get him over. That is back-breaking. Sink below here, devastating. Josh looks at this and says, I'm not getting reprise still. I need to find a way to go over this. There are some cards like um, Out for Blood that don't care about reprise that will give you, that will give you the damage. But your opponent still has three cards to block with here. You pop courage, so you are you're committed to some degree in making something happen here. I mean, singing steel blade turned off. Forget about it. Biting, Biting blade. blade will get you there. No, no reprise, but it's it's you're paying two for three, and that's the twinning blade. So we are looking for a triple hit turn here. Dawn blade comes in for six, block for four, and we're going to be attacking again with the dawn blade. But just to, just to be clear, this is 60% of what Josh was hoping for this turn, right? Like, Jack is playing perfectly around reprise as, as much as possible here. Um, this is the kind of turn that we saw this against Andrew Rudin, where it just broke the, the Oldham's back for the rest of the game. At this point, Josh is threatening to take his opponent to maybe 24 life, right? Um, there's no still bait supremacy to guarantee draws off these. Turns out the Arsenal was biting blades, so Josh might just is looking for just some damage here. But Jack could might just he might just be completely unperturbed by this, Michael. He might turn back, he might go for a blood rush. Anything like that is possible here. So there's a lot of bells and whistles on this. But in terms of how it gains Josh tempo, what he spent for it, he has not regained that value yet. 
Yeah, I mean the 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 only thing really going here is the uh, getting that Dawn Blade counter, uh, and yeah, pushing what, two damage on this hit and then four on the next one, maybe five with the uh, Brave Forge Bracer. Uh, so Shin uh, asks why twinning if he was over because this Josh already hit with the first attack, so he's already gotten the Dory trigger of getting to attack again. He attacked a naked Dawn Blade for three, had to use bolters on it. Then courage, then precision press, then attacked again. So he already is. This is not his. This is his third attack now, not his second one. And again, yeah, you get a counter because you've hit twice this turn. Always nice to have. Uh, Dawnblade comes in here. You are threatening another attack action. Your opponent knows. Okay, well, there's no glistening steel blade here, so my opponent's not getting any more counters. Uh, I'm at 31 life. Pretty, pretty comfortable. My opponent can't overpower me. Can't route me. Might be alpha blood, but. You lose value on Alpha Blood if you play it on your last attack. Maybe your opponent just Arsenal's here. Josh gets to Arsenal. He's going up against a four-card hand. Yeah, considering that he decided not to use the Brave Forge Bracers and still float one resource, kind of... I mean, th this could go both ways. This could be a mind game of saying, like, ha, huh, I actually have a plus three pump. Or, no, I actually don't. I'm just going to Arsenal this, but I'm going to psych you out by floating this one. Yeah. This is like a... I think Jack's displaying a really, you know, a very clear understanding of of where Dorinthia can trip her opponents up here. There's no overblocking. There's no giving reprise triggers where it's not necessary. Uh, I mean, Jack might be considering blocking with like scabs and crown here, just to be really miserly, or just take the damage and uh, and keep going. So, um, the best that Josh can sort of do to, to cap this turn off is maybe to end with an arsenal or or get a little bit of extra damage here. So. Again, that reprise is is being tantalizingly held outside of Josh's grasp. Yeah, and and if he decides to opt for the uh, armor block here, I mean, precision press only works on the next attack, so it's already been used yep. on the second sword swing. So that's yeah, right, no no piercing, cleanly block and not trigger reprise, as you said. And right now, Jack's uh, you'll notice Jack is checking Josh's graveyard um, for what? I mean, I'm not sure. Um, there's no, obviously no go again on this Dawn Blade attack, so I mean, I, uh, I've i never heard of a four-hit turn. I, I guess it's within the, the realm of possibility. You, I think you, like Sheen is pointing out in the chat, you should just take four damage here, uh, and you are laughing on the way to the bank. You are at 27 life. You have four cards. Your opponent has uh, proverbially blown their load uh, on this game and, and has not been able to really force you to respect them, so it's a good place to be as Reinar. Um, you're, not, you're not playing Livia, so you don't have any chance of randomly... Uh, you know, tripping over a, a twig and, you know, becoming deceased on the spot here. So things are looking very good for our brute. Yeah, they're uh, losing that one resource, not using the Brave Forge, but maybe opting to, you know, psych out the opponent. But yeah, he just, op uh, Jack decides to just take the four. Yep. And here we go with the scabbies once more. Okay, a little bit of a, yeah, a glint of hope here for <laughs> our intrepid warrior player. It had to be a gambler's gloves for a re-roll on scabskins. I heard ones are really hot this time of year, Jack. <laughs> Oof. Oh, it's dancing. Oh, there we go. All right, two AP. Not a bad spot. Four cards in hand. 10 health lead. Yeah, and again, I mean, this could be as as simple as Mandible Claw for three, follow it up with the two for six and, and call it a day. You know, yep. throw a card in Arsenal and be happy with that. Um, So we'll see. I think, I'm trying to think of... Dorinthia still has plenty of spots where she can where she can have some blowout potential here, especially if there's a way to get extra counters on Doorblade. Being at, being at four feels very good against a Reinar, especially with all the defense reactions you've sort of drawn out already. I've seen two sinks, a fate, uh, a reckless swing. So it doesn't feel bad, but if someone astutely pointed out in chat, uh, in chat sorry, that uh, there's another Blood Rush Bellow coming up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Shin is correct. You cannot just scab skin at the start of every turn now. So this will make Jack a little bit more... Uh, Ho hum on turns like that, and a sink being pitched here. Oh, could tell you quite a lot about what else is in his hand, really. Yep, for sure. And it's and depending on how the savage feast goes, he could just. Uh, and that is a very good one to discard. <laughs> there, he's going to grab two cards. Oh man, 
Yeah, that's real nice. Savage Feast, of course, uh, allows you to draw a card if you discard a six or more, and Beast Within, of course, uh, will later do the same if you can pull sixes off the top here. So there's a wreck romp So they're resolving the uh, Beast Within first. Losing one life, getting that card in hand. Yep. There's still an action point to follow this up. So this mm. extra card, all right, well, we know what that is now. The extra card density here also means that Jack can present two sixes here, have a, a really nice sort of 12 damage turn potentially, if not more. And he just drew off the Savage Feast, replenishing his hand back up to three. Mind you, that also means that he, his claws are on now. So those all have go again. Yep. Yeah, action points be damned now. That's less of a less of a concern. Obviously, it, it's a weird dichotomy for the Rhino, right? Because he'd kind of like to arsenal a sink below, but he also needs to pitch it out of his hand so he doesn't brick on a on like a discard trigger. So that's one thing that can work in Josh's favor is that Jack wants to divest himself of having like defense reactions while he's trying to have a smooth sort of turn with uh, making sure he hits on all of his discards. Yeah, it is really a, a delicate balance that Jack needs to be playing. Uh, yeah, Brute, it's actually a very big brain class to play. Um, you got a lot of things to have to think about uh, whenever you randomly discard. You got to come up with a new plan consistently. Yeah, and for Josh here, I think, like, you know, he realizes that he, does, he hasn't really rested tempo in, in a big way, but we saw him manage to sort of off two cards in an arsenal and get the game back to the point where the Reinar is, you know, only working with two cards a turn, and now without scab skins being able to be used willy-nilly, uh, that is favorable. The, the concern is here, 28 cards left in deck, so not a whole lot to work with. Um, we have seen... Uh, to be fair, like his density, his threat density, I'm still pretty happy with. Like we've seen, I think we've seen a glint. Uh, there's still Warriors Valors here. Uh, he, I think he's blocked with all of his CNCs, but some of those more late game relevant threats, your singings are, are still there. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing to sort of hang your hat on at this stage. You've noticed he's actually used, um, you know, like Precision Press, for example. If you have like a good reason to use that card before you get to your second cycle, it's great to just sort of make sure you have good threat density. Uh, here again, like blocking with the blue, trying to make sure that he's keeping some action in the deck. And Spores of War, pretty darn good card, but it's really like a, it's a fair weather kind of card. It's like you, you, you love Spores when you're doing really well, but when you're not, it's like a little bit hard to, to be threatening with it. And here's an overpower here to block and Savage Fear. Oh, 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 another one. Oh, oh man. Get yeah, that's, that's fast. very good. And that's just free damage at that point. I yeah, maybe there's a world where, like, Josh... I hate the idea of blocking with braces here, but there's a world where that is just where you want to make sure you can't just get blown out in one turn by going to, like, 12 life or whatever. Multiple, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah give there. him the braces here. Something that, like, a lot of... I think, you know, when I first started playing Flesh and Blood was... Uh, it took me a while to understand. Uh, and against heroes where there's a, a threshold where you can just insta-lose... Um, you know, you you can block if it's even though you're not trying to save your own life or avoid a non-hit. It's like against Icelander, right? Do you want to fall into that dangerous twelve life zone where like a storm strider's turn just blows you out? You maybe want to try and keep yourself above that. It makes perfect sense to to use some equipment here. But uh Josh is unfortunately starting to get ground down. Uh and while there is good threat density in the deck, he's been forced to offer much of this up in blocks. The value here for the the counter though is not to be discounted. So your opponent Unfortunately for you, still has pretty healthy armor. Um, normally, this counter would be good to ask for another card from your opponent, and that's that's tempo. Here, your opponent denies you a prize trigger. Josh doesn't have the puncture, and he loses the counter. Yep, and Reinhardt is continuing to dig, uh, trying to find that, I guess, third Blood Rush Bellow, honestly, would just close it out here. Um... Yeah, tunic counter as well, which is... Pretty nice. Okay, so again, no scab skins to start off the turn. We're not, we're not going to get loopy like that. Um, maybe midway through if we feel like we've done enough damage already. So Wild Ride here, looking to discard a six. And get that go again. Yeah, 
It's a lot of shuffles. Makes you wonder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I think your opponent's nervous a little bit when yeah. the. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we got here? Oh, there it is. Yes, there it is. There it is. <laughs> the beginning. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so that is obviously a non-attack action, ladies and gentlemen. Wild Ride does not get go again here. You don't have an action point to, you know, try and do something with your scab skin. So for Josh, there's an opportunity. The question is, he's got a four-card hand here. This is still half his life total, thereabouts, of damage coming in from the Wild Ride. It's all there's going to be this turn, but it still needs to be respected. Josh might just be happy enough having a two-card hand plus Arsenal. If it's like a Warrior's Valor, if it's a pertinent threat, you then... Ask for more cards from Reinar. Reinar is running out of opportunities here just to give you equipment and disrespect you and sort of keep your reprise turned off. So there's a window here, but Josh is really running out of that buffer. You want to use your life turtle as a resource, but you're at 13 and you're facing six damage. Yeah, I think the right call here is to definitely yep preserve some life total. Uh... Second twinning blade. I think that's the last twinning blade. Uh, one used, two blocked with. All right, this doesn't suck. Five damage here, threatening a draw with a card and arsenal. No go again on the board yet. Um, but considering that Jack only has one, well, two potential armor, this this will require a card or two if he wants to be able to shut this down. Yeah, it's... Uh... It might be a three-carder from the Rhino if he really wants to respect it, but without the potential of go again from his opponent, he might Jack might say, well, okay, uh, I guess my opponent can, if they have it, they have it. Because they already have an arsenal, so letting him draw a card here is kind of yeah. whatever. And that's yep. that decision made by Jack there is, it's very bad for Josh. Uh, hard to come back from. Here's another wild ride. I think I'd suggest... That the hand has been sculpted here a little bit by Jack <laughs> to make sure we don't have a repeat of last turn's mishap. Yeah, no, no deja vu. That was a six pulping in the bin. Intimidate trigger. So here, this is, you know, obviously frightening. Uh, Josh presents two cards to block this uh, with the Intimidate trigger being active. That means that the next six that comes in leaks some damage. Uh, and Josh obviously is with like one card hand plus arsenal. He cannot maneuver himself back into a comfortable spot. The puncture here, less relevant, right, Michael? Because a lot of that equipment's already been blocked with. Swing big to follow it up is... That is very good. Such a good card. Take eight. Oh, okay. Take eight. Josh gets his card back. He says, I need to play off a two-card hand. If I come into the next turn with one carder, it's just not happening for me. This might be Josh's last real chance to wrestle some, like, tempo back. But the life, like, we're not in the danger zone for the Reinar here. Yep, it's a glimpse with no reprise. Mm. Jack has just, he's fielded these questions very effectively from Josh all game. He can also say no blocks here. There's one more uh, blood rush in the deck, as we know. This could be over. That was the quickest no blocks. Oh, yeah, well, there it is. For good reason. <laughs> oh. My little warrior heart cannot take it. All right. Here's a banish. Oof. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's the, Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. So obviously Beast was in here. Uh, triggers. There's a six. So we'll take that extra card. It is a red. So, you know, it could be better, but... Mm -hmm. I'll crack there, just displayed. Two off a of blood rush. It's like, hey, <laughs> I still have my five card hand. Yeah. And I intimidated you. So Josh in the perfect world here can eat the man he can eat through nine of the mandible claw damage. Uh there would still be one action point available there. If it's a six to follow it up, this is essentially done. Brutal stuff. Brutal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> after after the card guys starting at a two to zero lead, again they call their pinch hitter Joe Sir in to try and get them out of trouble. This time though runs up against a very familiar foe, and uh, looks like the winds of fate are not with the warrior today. Let's see how this goes down. So manable for five here. Josh 
only one point of armor block here. Throws the supremacy in front, says, okay. Pitch, pitch. That's a big old savage beat down. That oh. is messed up. So we discard a card here, and this is it. Discard a six, and... Uh, uh, come across for what, 14? <laughs> This is the uh, the moment where you, you play. It, it yeah. <laughs> that is. He's already dead. Oh, <laughs> oh the humanity. And there it is. Oh. And so the magical run of the card guys here through the Fab Team Cup comes to an end. Great display here from Jack. I mean, not only does he understand the matchup, but he understands his opponent, I think, really, really well. Uh, nothing is given for free there. And this is something that a lot of Dorinthia players know. We, we we know this. We pick up the deck against a good player. There's no free wins. Uh, it doesn't matter what they're playing. Uh, and Jack really played around that spectacularly. The two early blood rushes, huge to gain that tempo. Putting Josh in a life total where, you know, there's no uh, there's no room to pivot. Uh, I think that's what's the most difficult thing to deal with. And then it's a matter of time, right? Reinhardt waits. He finds that last blood rush and it's all over. And I was fascinated to see the double medical clause flipped here um, because in the past we'd see Reinhardt try and play a slower game. But you can see what like uh, Savage Beatdown does. Like some of these new cards for Reinhardt really uh, kick that power level up a notch. Yeah, three for 14. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty right? good. Uh, ah, obviously, there's ah. you know a lot of things you have to do to set it up. But geez, like that is just... Oh. That 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 is the big bonk for sure. Um, but yeah, Josh definitely you know fought valiantly all the way to the very end. Very disciplined, um, and yeah, he, he he put up the best fight that he could. But I think the contrast is really interesting, right? You see, I think we saw like a very idealized uh, example of what Dorinthia can do with some setup uh, against Oldham last week. This time we have a situation where Jack is is playing around replies replies very effectively, Josh. Good to have you here, Hi. man. You've always said that Reinar is a tough matchup uh, for Dory in general. One looked a little bit more than just tough, though. That looked absolutely brutal. Yeah, that was a uh, uh, that was a very very good example of uh, the what I think is really really tough about that matchup is because oh let, let me get Jack. Just drag Jack up here. Hey hey Jack, this is this is where we're hanging out. Can you can you hear me, Jack? Hey. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. So. Uh, let me let me talk a little bit about that matchup. Um, so hey. that matchup has always been traditionally really really difficult for Dorinthia because Reinhardt defends well if he wants to, and his he takes away the agency you have as a mid range player, which is kind of like this is the only here in the game that takes agency away from a mid range player. Yeah, and so when he's intimidating me, if the wrong cards get intimidated, I can't block efficiently, and I can't return damage efficiently. And it didn't help that I didn't draw a supremacy until I was at 13 life. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, and, you know, he had he had smooth draws, but overall, like, he knows how, Jack has played me 30, 40, 50 times at this point. He knows exactly yeah. when to block, when not to block. It was super obvious he had a D-react in Arsenal, so I was like, I can't even rely <laughs> on reprise. Um, and he, you know, he saved his armor for so having four armor is really important because that means your first counter doesn't even do anything. Yeah. Um, so like Jack just played that well. He drew Rel as well. And when those when those two things happen and you're playing against a world class player like Jack, you know it's it's going to be rough. Well, Jack, I we, mean, from your perspective, we, yeah, I'd love to hear some of how that game felt for you. Well, uh, I I must thanks my teammates. Uh, Kaiser because he also played the review with me and we practice a bit and I I'm sorry to all viewers because I messed up my intimidate twice. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he unbelievable for a Ryan for you. He he never did he never does that IRL only I think he's on like a laptop at work or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm yeah. on a laptop, but yeah, I yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel a bit mm. pressure because mm. this is the the match point. Yeah, of course. <laughs> We um, yeah. so we've seen. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, both your opinions on this. I'm curious mm -hmm. about. But last time we saw you two play in the uh, Prizing Show match, Jack was mm -hmm. Jack. You were playing much more of like a uh, slower pace. You were using Romping Club. You were really trying to block efficiently. Like you were not trying to be the beat down. This is a very different play mm -hmm. style than what we yeah. saw last time. Is that because Reiner has access now to more cards that make this make more sense, or why the change in style for you in this Dorinthia matchup? 
uh, I, I, because uh, I have some practice with my teammates, and we agree the one of the best approach for Rainer against Olivia is uh, try to go as fast as I can. Yeah, but I, uh, go, I agree with that as, actually. Um, yeah, from from my experience, playing against romping club is easier. Yeah, because if you if you mess up your dice in the first battle turn with the romping club, you did nothing. You just uh, maybe swing for 10 or uh, if you have wire right or power ping, you might be able to swing twice. But if yeah. you uh, if you don't have those kind of cheaters, uh, cheaters card, I, uh, we call it brute, uh, you just do nothing. You just swing for 7 or uh, maybe a swing back for 10. Yep. And that's so, underwhelming. Yeah, so I kind of want to talk about my game plan in the middle of the game because... so. I mean, from turn one, I was already kind of, I was like, okay, I'm going to be kind of behind for a while. There was like a 12, 15, 18 point life lead for him. And I was like, all right, so I have to really think carefully, like, how am I going to come back in this game? And I was like, well, he basically has to mess up one of his blocks. And I have to, that was singing Steel Blade on that triple hit combo turn, by the way, Jack. Yeah. Um, if if I, I identified, like, literally the only way for me to get back in this game is to hit three times, and then on the third time, glint into another twinning. So, <laughs> hit four times. I was like, is this really the only way for me to yep. win this game? And I was oh. like, I, I think that's the only way for me to win this game, right? And he didn't give me reprise on the third attack, so I was like, okay, well, yeah, he never gave me four, reprise Four from Mama, right? Yeah, uh, he Four from Arsenal on the second swing, and didn't give me reprise on the first or third swing, which yeah. is correct. Like, I, I knew, like, there's a very high chance he doesn't block this. He said no block on my first attack so quickly. I was like, oh, God, this turn is doomed. <laughs> uh, and, well, like, if, yeah. if, if they don't give you reprise on your triple hit combo turn, you're it's really, really, really tough. Well, it's a naked well, dawn blade off a of four car yeah. hand and an arsenal, right? Yeah, there's and, like, no way. Unless, he, you, have, unless yeah. you have run through, it just yeah. feels awful. Yes. So that's why I kind of needed, like, at least a valor or supremacy, something to incentivize a block, but didn't happen and i knew he had a d-react in arsenal so i was like i was like well the only way i can do this is triple hit he gives me reprise once somewhere and i glint into twinning yeah i was like that sounds really hopeless but that's that's what i have to do and then after that failed i was like okay maybe i can fatigue him if his third blood rush bellow is a dud so i was keeping track of the cards very carefully but that never happened. I was, I was like, oh, if I slow down the game as well, maybe he'll roll scabs and roll a one. Maybe I can get tempo back there. But that never happened either. So, you know, backup plan into backup plan, unfortunately, didn't work. But, you know, what can you do? Yeah, Savage I mean, <laughs> A Brutal. Yeah, that the 14 uh, damage attack towards the end of the turn was really nasty. So, yeah. <laughs> Team Blue Pitch advanced here to the semifinals. Now, do we know, will it be like yep. an all-Hong Kong matchup? Is it Team Gold? It is. It oh, is an all-Hong Kong matchup. Jack, how are you feeling about that? That's a huge game. Well, I, uh, I, I think the playmat did something because I, I draw like two battles in my first three turns, and <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think just yeah. uh, got it correct because I'm, I'm just waiting for my third battle to close up the game, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to draw as fast as I can and to uh, keep the pressure up, and uh, I've. Actually, I've uh, tuned the deck a bit into this matchup because uh, normally uh, I, 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 I never uh, scan through the whole available card library for a while. So I just uh, did it like uh, days ago and I and I think Almaso is a good card against Dorian Fear. So I, mm. uh, and maybe some other uh, class like a briar or maybe yeah. five because they usually don't have six attack power and i can have a guarantee go again to uh keep up the damage yeah. so i put it in my sideboard and mm. i think it does some works maybe but uh, because i never played out but yeah mm. the, the i do have cnc so that, that does kind of negate yeah yeah, yeah. That, but yeah yeah i i think uh you know, I, I really do enjoy playing against Jack, and I do enjoy the Reinhardt versus Dory matchup, but I feel like sometimes there's no agency in the game. And I felt like that for the first few turns. I was like, well, I'm just, okay, there goes was, all my cards with the Vanish Zone. 
So you had a turn draft, I think, where you had a two card hand, but you opted to deploy an epot, right? It was like fairly early in the, in yeah. the game. Yeah. Right? So that that yeah. was that was glint epot, and oh. I was like, well, I could pitch. So the the idea there was if I keep an extra card, I wanted to guarantee a blue on the next turn. Yeah. I could have kept three cards and then pitched glint into epot. Eh, but that. Uh, it doesn't sure. feel it like, doesn't exactly represent a tempo so yeah sure it's yeah like, i kind of i kind of just wanted to uh set up an epot and ensure i had a blue on the next turn yep. um obviously that's not ideal that that's kind of how reiner operates right some he puts you in spots where you're like well now my hand sucks and you can't sculpt oh uh, great yeah 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 yep 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 yeah and mm. what uh, a few of my turns actually mm. my hands are sub too but i got skips and I got high road, <laughs> so I I can pull off something like a claw and then uh, uh, roll damage for six. Mm -hmm. It's not very uh, not something very good, but yeah, it's still something because it it's like nine damage in uh, not a okay. very good hand, and I can still get an arsenal or something. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, well played, anyways. Nonetheless, yeah, always exactly. a pleasure to play with you, Jack. Yeah, my my pleasure too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, thanks a bunch for both of you for uh, sharing some uh, closing words with us here. I mean, Michael, uh, pretty insane game. Obviously, always uh, maybe tough to see your brother go down, but uh, we got to cover some great matches here tonight. I mean, uh, love to get some of your thoughts on uh, yeah how that went down before we close up here. Yeah, yeah, no, it was an amazing series, and yeah, that last game was a real treat. Classic battle. You know, I would I would like to say it was more back and forth, but it was kind of a, a savage beatdown, as you could say. But yeah, it was brutal. Like that sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think yeah. Jack demonstrated, you know, beautifully how to not turn on reprise as well as, you know, being able to, you know, utilize that arsenal effectively using the armor really well um, and just being able to show, you know, true mastery of how to, you know, handle a other master um, in their own class. So I thought that that last game was a treat to watch for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, a yeah, masterclass. Even for a Dory player, watching it play out, you start to see, okay, like there is just, uh, you know, some situations are very hard to fight your way out of. For those that are here that maybe are here for the first time or, you know, don't spend a ton of, ton of time here, make sure you hit subscribe because the Car Guys is really aggressive with the, their rotation of content. There's a ton of stuff to watch. You go back, you can look at the entirety of the Fab Cup, uh, you know, for the Card Guys. You can look at the last time they played against Blue Pitch. There's a ton of fantastic videos. I personally recommend Josh Lau's Fab 201 series, which is a fantastic resource for to new returning uh, sort of uh, intermediate players to really sharpen up a lot of elements uh, of their game. I can I can definitely vouch for that uh, in improving my sort of gameplay. Uh, again, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's fantastic content here and more to come from the card guys. On a personal note, it's been a pleasure to be here. Michael, thanks for joining me so much in the booth. It was uh, a ton of fun. Yeah. Big shout out to Josh as well for joining me uh, earlier on. And uh, Michael, I hope we can do it again soon, mate. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure meeting you and casting with you, Mitch. Likewise, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure here to bring you the Card Guys' top eight match uh, against Blue Pitch. Unfortunately, they won't be advancing, but make sure you cheer for the Blue Pitch gang as they go up into an all-Hong Kong game against Team Gold in those semifinals.